If you like growing food, then you might like eating food. And if you like eating food, then you might like cooking food. Well, go check out the first season of Backyard Kitchen available on Tubi for free. Available on all smart TVs and online. That's T-U-B-I. All free. First season of Backyard Kitchen. All right, maybe I'll get this intro right. Tomato suckers. They suck. Well, do they suck? Do we need to trim them? Let's find out right here on the Backyard Gardens Podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens Podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We are your hosts, Ben and Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening where we learn to grow and grow for change. If you love the Backyard Gardens podcast, which I know you do, then you can support us by following the link below to Patreon to become a patron and to support the show. You will also get one extra Minnesota month and you will get a, the Community Gardens podcast. I had a total brain fart, couldn't think of it. But um, yeah, come join us. And then t-shirts are on sale up until June 20th. That's right, the last day of spring. You liked that, didn't you? BYG Spring is the code, 25% off t-shirts, mugs, all that stuff. So come check it out. Tomato suckers, let me um, let me do this real quick. Let me reread the thing, the questions, so people mm-hmm. that are new following can follow along with what's going on, and then we'll okay. start. Uh, so this is from a patron. And uh, she says, I'm working on my first garden from seeds. I've planted both pepper seeds and tomato seeds. In researching, I've come across the idea of suckers and when to or not to cut them off. I'm supposed to cut them off for tomatoes, but encourage them for peppers by topping the plant. Help, I'm confused. I don't want to be made a sucker. Ha <laughs> ha. My first try gardening. I would love an episode on this topic. Well, We have given you last week an episode on the pepper portion. So now we're going to talk about the tomato portion. We're also going to work on the timing of that planted laugh and the continuation of the question. Like we may just need a third week just to get that straight. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's more natural. That works. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I like the fake laugh. That's how I roll. (laughs) So um, tomato suckers. First of all, do you trim them? Uh, I do. Really? Yeah, all, well. All year long? Well, yes. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to even let you get in my head. That's what all of that look was just now, if you're watching it. Like, it kind of feels like it's not a whole truth that I'm telling. No, so I don't do it all year long. But it's my goal this year. I am I am signing up for it one more time. I'm going to try to do a better job at trimming my suckers um, because they don't do a whole lot of good for me and my plants where I'm growing. And okay, so why don't they do a whole lot of good for you? So if we talk about suckers, it's another opportunity for really another tomato plant, right? You know, so how do we describe them? Do you want to give the definition first? I was going to go with the armpit. The armpit. Yeah. Yeah. Are you making fun of me? Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. Armpit. armpit. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> this is your arm. This is your pit. Um, please go ahead. I have to like recalibrate here. You've thrown me completely off. Well, so the thing is, is you can trim suckers off to um, root for another plant, which is fine if you want to do so. Because what they'll end up doing is it's a branch off of the main plant. So the branch, it will grow, it'll branch off, and it basically the tomatoes are a vine. Okay. Yeah. So it'll branch off and then it'll form tomatoes on there. Which, I, I mean, here's my, my stance on this. What's the problem with that? Yeah. So you have a stem of a tomato, like when you first start your tomatoes, is she starting them from seed, right? And then you see the additional, you know, their additional branches. You see things that look like that original stem, right? And so 
my failed attempt at an armpit <laughs> and between some of those branches you'll find suckers and I had to look at a lot of videos and a lot of images to really be able to identify them um, but those suckers look a lot more like a regular tomato plant and so again for those with a longer growing season which we touched on last week with peppers like this could be gold right you know so your plants getting bigger it's for sure going to get bushier there are more opportunities for these little tomato plants to come out of this one tomato plant and produce fruit, right? Um, But for those of us that have a shorter growing season, which I would consider myself one of those folks, when you're able to grow tomatoes in a shorter window, does that method of letting the plant go, right, and not pruning suckers, does that give you the most from that plant? Because every time you have leaves that are growing, stems that are growing, branches that are growing, that's energy that that plant needs to basically support, right? And so the theory around pruning your suckers, less energy into those things you've pruned off, more energy into the the part of the plant that's still remaining, which in turn should help even produce more ripe fruit faster. Like that's the theory that as I understand it. Yeah, and I've seen people on both sides of the argument. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen them say, I got a whole lot off of my... It's called single stemming. Okay, if you were to do it 100%, you would be single stemming your tomatoes. Mm-hmm. It's it's really hard to do because there comes a point where the tomato is just like fast and strong. Yeah. So we're going to do an audio portion of this, but we're also going to do like a regular video of it because it's very hard to explain. But basically if you look at your tomato plant, you're going to get something that grows out of the side. And there's usually, I would say a branch and they get what maybe eight inches long and it just comes up and over. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. And then from the crook of that, from the main stem, there's another one that comes up and it'll grow up. That is the sucker. Not the one that's hanging off that's eight inches long is curving over, okay? Those are actually very important because they are collecting energy to feed the plant mm-hmm. and they're shading the tomatoes so they don't get sun scald. So, like where I live, and if you live, you know, I'm lower, you know, in really warm areas, the tomato can actually basically boil inside of the tomato and, and burst. So that's really important that you leave those branches. Now, here's my truth moment. For years, I trimmed the important one, the eight inch one that just drooped over. And I was like, I'm getting all these suckers off this bitch. Ain't nothing happening. And I was cutting them off and I was proud and I was wrong. And I'm talking about for probably the first four years of my gardening, you know, life. That's what I did because I was under the impression that if I didn't trim my suckers, I wasn't going to get any tomatoes. Mm hmm. I was trimming the wrong damn thing and I was getting so many tomatoes I couldn't eat them. That's all I got to say. Yeah. So for more years than not, I've let my tomato plants run wild. So trimming suckers is not, let's say, let's take a step back. And while she didn't ask this specifically, pruning a plant, which could include trimming suckers it doesn't have to just be trimming suckers but that's just not about producing more from the plant you know we talk about airflow or at least we have in these last handful of episodes that gives you an opportunity to manage that better um the i think it's sexy when i see kind of a a tomato plant that's looking kind of like oh there's only stem and fruit there right you know and that's what i'm going for more of the single stem method but like you said it's it's work if i had a single tomato plant i'm pretty confident i could stay on top of it but we're talking about multiples you know it's it's a daily effort you know once that plant starts growing um and i am committing to it this year because of a couple of reasons including wanting to grow more varieties but being okay with in my same space and being okay with all of those plants not producing the biggest bushel of tomatoes like that's okay for some of the varieties i'm growing right yeah exactly and i mean it, it comes down i think a lot And this is just depends too, is how much space do you have? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have a lot of space, this is a really useful technique to improve airflow Mm -hmm. and do all these things. And then it comes down to your belief. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it your belief that you are going to get more off of it? Because I have not, unlike the peppers, I have not done a side by side 
mm-hmm. on purpose or by accident, nor do I plan to do in like straight truth talk. Like I'm not going to do that yeah. because it's just not worth my time. I'm either going to do it or I'm not going to do it. And I usually go about trimming. I usually at first I'll, I'll wait till they get to a certain height and then I'll trim the first maybe six to eight inches off of the plant completely bare stem Mm -hmm. boom Mm -hmm. done airflow is now coming up underneath and then i'll wait and then i usually do like once a month i'll come out and i'll do a hard prune on my tomatoes but i'm not so sure that i'm doing the right method it just kind of works for me i think it actually puts the tomato in shock yeah so the easiest thing to do is when you see that sucker coming out remember You've got the eight inch leaf that's just kind of like hanging there. If you're watching the video, you can see it's just hanging there. And then the little one, when it's real small, you can just poop, pick it off. Mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. really the best time to do it. If it grows and it gets thick, then you're going to start stressing the plant. Yeah. I mean, I've seen people that are walking through their uh, tomato area and they talk about these are single stems. These are single stems. This is a double stem. And in most cases that it got away from them. Right. And it was at such yeah, a large that's state where they didn't talk about, I was just doing double stem on this yeah, one. Yeah. Well, Come no, on, man. They, in the videos I've seen, they basically said like, I wanted this to be single stem, but here we are. Um, I also, for me, and this is that weird space of be satisfied with what you have. So remember this 30 foot by four foot space. I talk about the cage baby. It was built for the purpose of growing tomatoes and a part of the reason why I'm still interested in single stemming I always put pepper plants inside of that same space and there's always the struggle by the time those tomato plants get big right you know because they are just a mountain of leaves and branches and it kind of goes back to does that really benefit what I'm growing here now if I can room this more heavily um and i can't promise every single tomato plant's going to be single stem but i am going to give it a good go um if i prune this more heavily right if i if i manage this plant more closely maybe i'm able to get more out of that space that's where my head is at least right and so what i do is i wait till they get thicker and i cut them and then i root them so i can have another tomato plant Mm -hmm. and this isn't the platform or the actual, maybe we'll have a whole series about how to, you know, root and, you know, all all kinds of stuff to get more plants out of other plants. We can do that, but that's something that you can do as well. If you feel like looking into that, if you're not patient enough to wait for us to do it. Um, But I will do that because I have a longer time. So I can usually get a second crop of tomatoes in which I've only done last year. I kind of played with a little bit. And this year I plan to kind of go forward Mm -hmm. because I get disease. And so therefore I can say, okay, I got disease, cut it out. Boom, done. Not even going to treat it. I'm just going to cut it out and rip it out and put another one in and then get a whole nother flush of tomatoes. So you can do that as well. Um, It's really good at going along that with, if you go to somebody else's garden, you're like, Ooh, I like that tomato. And you still have time. You can, take a sucker off of it you know because a lot of people don't single stem because it's straight up hard to do yeah yeah. it's like a full-time job to go out and be like all right i'm gonna go single stem my tomato like aggressive and it's wanting to do what it's meant to do and basically you're coming in and cutting it short quite literally each time um so and i've tried it a couple of times and then you look up and it's like I'm, my head spinning like where's the armpit like hell with it like let it go um, yeah. but then if you think about the way that my plants look your plants look by the end of the season I mean you're wading through leaves and branches and plenty of suckers that are full grown now just to get to tomatoes and so like, I, I, I believe there is a benefit I just don't know if I could reach the benefit to pruning suckers I just don't know if I can reach the expectation that comes with the single stem you know, so if I can stay on top of it, to be quite frank, yeah, or to be and quite I, Batavia. And so, and so I actually, on conversely from how you feel about it, I don't think a single stem tomato is sexy. Mm-hmm. I like a big old bushy bastard. I mean, I just like pull like tomatoes everywhere, falling mm-hmm. out of them, lots of greenery. Like that's how I like it. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. And I always like, I'm like Batavia. I have a goal to get there, but Mm -hmm. I just give up, you know, and I I don't even really try very hard to do it. So, and it's just like we talked about with the peppers. It's not necessary to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. You do not have to do it. I don't care what you see anywhere on the internet. 
Grow your tomatoes the way you want to grow them and be proud of them, man. Screw the people that tell you you got the single stem. It's not a necessity. So there is only one plant from last year. Let's just focus on last year's tomatoes. And I don't know. I think I had something like eight or nine or ten varieties or something. There's only one variety that I felt like I, I wanted more off of that plant. You know, so I didn't do any of this. I mean, I, I do as a general rule these last handful of years. I definitely do almost like a foot from the you know base of the plant up. I'll prune that once the plant gets larger. But other than that, that was the only pruning I was doing, unless I was trying to combat what looked like sickness. Um, and there was only one plant, and that was a Cherokee purple that I realized was a fire tomato at the end of the season. And it's kind of like, oh, I wish it had produced more. You know, and I don't yeah. know that if I had single stemmed that, if it would have, I'm not sure. Um, but I definitely am team, you don't have to do any of this. Right. Um, the recommendation stands when it comes to the kind of from the ground up pruning that. I also, again, given where you may be growing, most of my tomatoes are growing in this cage. And so I don't have to like fight with any of the, you know, squirrels or any of the other things that may be coming to taste my tomatoes. The more you prune away, the more vulnerable <laughs> that plant is. So consider that, that is you, true. Yeah. Yeah. Who you may be inviting to kind of have some of these very visible <laughs> tomatoes now. Yeah. Now one benefit to single stemming is for sure, like less wind resistance against the tomato. So if you're like me and you've planted an indeterminate variety and you didn't realize it, or you don't understand how big it can get because mm-hmm. every year it just shocks me how big it can get. <laughs> You, by trimming off all that excess, you're cutting down on the weight so your trellises can hold it or whatever you're going to use to support it. Your supports mm-hmm. are going to hold it. Uh, and two, wind resistance. So as you know, I live in Hurricane Alley. So when we get storms, I'll go out and I'll trim the crap out of my tomatoes and the wind can just kind of come through it instead of catching it and pushing on it. Because a lot of times what will happen is I'll come out and my supports like last year I had, man, I had this Frankenstein rig and, um, I came out and it was just leaning, you know what (laughs) I mean? And at that point though, the problem was I had two months left in the growing season and I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. I just had to, you know, I was constantly every day trying to like fix it and work on it. It was so frustrating. It wasn't even, dude, it made me want to quit gardening. Like it was so frustrating. I'd be out there about to have a heat stroke sitting there just trying to like prop it up, tie it up. You know, trim it, trim it, trim it. It was awful. So there is a benefit to it. That's mm-hmm. all. I mean, you know what I mean? And I was cutting off. I mean, some, you know, when you see the people are like, yeah, this one's double stemmed. I was cutting off like quadruple stems and like mm-hmm. it was crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, I definitely there is. Um, so we don't have tropical storms or anything like that. And while I do live in the windy city, that wind doesn't normally pick up where it do damage until late in the year. Um, yeah. But it never fails. So just generally, whether you do nothing, no pruning, or whether you're doing some pruning of suckers, or if you're trying to single stem, all of that's going to need some support. Right. Yeah. Um, and for me, when I've generally just did that initial kind of ground up pruning, and I may cut some things back just here and there, but it's not very intentional. Every year, there's going to be one or two tomato plants that just like, give up, and are I'll come out and they are like near the ground. Like I have to do some emergency stat, like retying and all of that. <laughs> and so that definitely happens. And I don't know that we often talk about kind of the weight of something like tomato plants, but you're spot on when it comes to um, it's a way to manage that. You know, if you found yeah. that's a problem for what you're growing. What would you do if this year I had like all of my tomatoes perfectly single stemmed and then I had one that just got like out of control and it was like flush full of tomatoes. I was like, this ain't going to do it and just cut it at the base and threw it, threw it in the compost. I, you would probably I, Well, cringe. if it's a cherry tomato, I could see that happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know the story of my wife, so. Yeah, that's the reason why I brought it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, I hope that answered the question. Um, if you want to go back in the other part of the peppers or about the peppers, that's in last week's episode, last Tuesday's episode. We'll have that for you. Uh, it just made sense to split it because it's two different subjects, even though they were confusing. So do what you want, man. 
Don't let the <laughs> internet, YouTubers, podcasters, Instagrammers, Facebookers, TikTokers, or any of that stuff, all those quick tip stuff and all that, just remember, you don't have to do it, man. People ate tomatoes 400 years ago without trimming a thing off of them. Remember that. But what you have to promise, if you actually decide to prune and encourage growth for peppers, like you got to come back and tell us how it went. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. You have to come back and tell me how it went. I'm joking. (laughs) Feel free. Feel free to do. Actually, you know what? DM us a picture on Instagram and we'll share it with the rest of our listeners. So, um... I'm over here like, nope, I'm just going to tell Batavia. That's what I, that's where I would be if I were her. You would? Yeah. You would? Yep. Okay. That's messed up, man. I just take the back Messed up because you're one. like, I don't want to hear it. You, did you forget that just moments ago? Okay. I did. I did. <laughs> I say things and then tune them out. That's how mm-hmm. I get through all of this that we do. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Do what your heart desires when it comes to tomatoes and peppers. These are all techniques you can use. Check out the Patreon below. Become a patron. We would love to have you guys join us. T-shirts on sale. BYG Spring. All the way up until June 20th. And until next time, grow some tomatoes. See ya. See ya. See ya. (laughs) We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please follow us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens TV. Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. Over on our website, BackyardGardensTV.com. And then we have Patreon at Backyard Gardens. And don't forget to check out our links below to help the show. Thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.